on. So basically for our principle of method, uh, when you take your formaldehyde and you add it to your grape juice solution, right there, it begins to react with amino acids, right here, what you got. So it begins to react with those amino acids. The formaldehyde begins to release, or I mean, I should say it reacts, and hydrogen ions are released in the solution. From there, you can take an NaOH solution and you can titrate it with this juice sample. Basically, what you want to do is neutralize the solution and from there you can figure out what the uh, available nitrogen content is in that grape juice. So, that's pretty much about it. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, let's jump right into this and, uh, you know, get this bread. All right, so. I'll be discussing some of the reagents and equipment. Michael, if you want to get a close-up over here. First thing we have is our one normality sodium hydroxide. You're also going to need 0.1. As far as glassware, you'll need a 150 milliliter beaker. You'll need a 100, 200 milliliter volumetric flask, some Kim wipes for the pH probe, a pH probe, some pH solution, both four and seven, a burette, and then a stir plate with some stir bars. Good. And last but not least, you'll need a 2XL lab coat, some gloves, Some gloves actually fit. And some glasses. Safety is the number one thing that we teach here at Fresno State. Oh, we're recording? Okay. Um, so one of the first things that you are going to want to do for this procedure is calibrate your pH meter. Um, what you're going to need is a waste beaker. Basically, you'll unscrew that, spray off the pH probe with a little bit of DI water. Make sure to catch everything in here. You don't want it spraying all over the equipment. Um, you pat that down with a Kim wipe. Make sure not to <laughs> break the pH probe because we only have one left. Um, and then from there, you can grab a couple of smaller beakers put your different pH solutions in there. For, for us, we'll only need pH 4 solution and pH 7 solution. Um, basically, you'll just set up your beaker, you'll put your probe in there, um, you'll also put a stir bar in there, and then you'll just have the solution mixing with the pH probe in there, and then from there, you know what to do, or you should at least know how to calibrate the pH meter. All right. So once you're done with that, um, calibrating your pH meter, what you can do is take 100 mils of your grape solution and put it into your 150 mil uh, beaker. You throw a stir bar in there, get it ready. And then you'll just use this setup, you'll move the pH meter over a little bit further. So you can bring it right next to your burette. In your burette, you, you will be using uh, one uh, normality NaOH. Uh, you're only gonna really use about 10 mils, so don't go crazy, don't go wild. Don't put a whole bunch of one normality NaOH. It's just a waste. You don't need to fill it up. All right. Yeah, so you'll titrate the one normality into the grape solution. Um, just be careful, you don't wanna go over. Uh, you can always add juice back if you go over. Basically, the end goal is to get to a pH of eight. So, like I was saying, if you go over a little bit, add a little bit more juice back, you're fine, don't worry. 
So the next step will be to take your pH 8 grape juice solution. You'll grab your 200 milliliter uh, volumetric flask. You pour it in there, get that done, and then you'll fill up the rest with DI water up to the line. And then from there, so once it's filled up to the line, you can take a graduated cylinder. You'll pour 100 mils of the solution into there. That way you can get an accurate reading. Um, and then from the graduated cylinder, you'll transfer over into a clean 150 mil beaker. Pour that right in there. Make sure to get all of it. And once that is done, you will have your, your juice solution ready. And then the next step will be to take 25 mils of the formaldehyde solution, pour it into a 100 mil uh, beaker. And then with this, you'll need to titrate it. basically do the same exact thing. You want to get this 25 mil solution um, of formaldehyde up to pH 8. So just like your grape solution earlier, you know, you'll titrate it. But with this, but this time, um, instead of using one normality, you'll be using 0.1 normality NaOH. And you'll literally only need about one or two mils. You really want to titrate it slow because you can overshoot it pretty quickly. Um, and just be careful of that, be conscious of that. Also because you're only using 25 mils, um, and, or actually I should say, since you're only using a small little beaker, you can add a little bit more than 25 mils. I would use like 40, just so your pH probe has a little bit more room to work with, because you're also gonna have a stir bar in there as well. It's gonna be a tight fit, but you're gonna have to figure it out. You have to make it work. Some sometimes in life, it just things don't fit. You gotta do what you gotta do. So once your formaldehyde solution is taken care of, we'll grab a clean graduated cylinder, pour about 25 mils in there, and then you'll take those 25 mils, add them right into your grape juice solution. And then from there, you will already have 0.1 NOH from when you were raising the pH of the formaldehyde. And then what you'll want to do is, so you'll have your 0.1 NOH solution in there. You want to fill it up so you're at about zero on the burette. And then from there, you'll have your, your grape juice plus formaldehyde solution going. You'll have the stir bar in there. And what you want to do is titrate um, the solution with the NOH until it reaches pH 8. Um, just remember what I mentioned in the procedure. So then once you titrate it and it reaches pH 8, just make sure to note the final volume on the burette. You'll take the initial volume and the final, you'll subtract those, you'll get your the amount of mils that it took to titrate the solution of grape juice and formaldehyde to pH 8. And then from there, you can plug that into our calculation. And that's pretty much about it when it comes to the procedure. Um, it's fairly simple. Just want to reiterate that you want to be careful when titrating the formaldehyde just because it reaches pH 8 so quickly. Uh, make sure your glassware is clean, of course. Um, and then, you know, just make sure to clean up after yourself. Pretty much it. Yep. This is no joke. We're dealing with some very serious stuff. If you look at this rating scale right here, we got threes all across the board. 
So when doing this experiment, you're going to be dealing with formaldehyde, which is very dangerous um, whenever you are pouring the solution or pipetting. You want to do it underneath the hood. You want to make sure that it is on. Uh, after, after you're finished with the experiment, you also want to make sure that the solution with the formaldehyde gets back into the properly named container just a hazardous waste container, I should say. Um, formaldehyde causes shortness of breath, um, so you want to make sure you get your puffer out just in case. Um, and just be safe. Just don't do dumb things. That's all I can really say. Right. Yeah, so uh, what we have here are our advantages and disadvantages of using this formaldehyde EAN experiment. Um, it's very cost effective, very quick and simple while also being accurate. The only downside of it is that you're dealing with dangerous chemicals. Um, just remember what I said, threes across the board. Um, and that's pretty much about it. That's all I have to say about that. All right, so what we have here is our typical Yan range. So your minimum for reds would be about 100 milligrams per liter. Your whites would be around 150 milligrams per liter. Um, from what I've heard and what we use in the winery, a uh, good range would be about 250 to 350. Uh, usually here at the winery, we like to stay around uh, like about 350. Uh, you know, if you go above that, uh, it won't kill you, but it might influence your fermentation. Um, it might speed it up and cause some off flavors, off aromas to occur. Uh, obviously, if you don't have enough yam, you know, there's always that potential for stuck fermentation and various other things that we've learned in class. So. All right, so after you've already completed the experiment, you'll have your numbers. Uh, you can just put that together using our YAN calculation over here. Nitrogen equals amount of 0.1 normality NaOH times 28, and that will give you a number Once you get that, you can figure out what you have, and from there proceed. Whether or not you want to add more uh, yeast nutrient, or you know whether or not it's at a range that you like. So, all right.